I'm Don Lemon. This is the 11th hour, and we're talking about those chilling Sandy Hook 911 tapes, and we're debating whether you should be able to listen to them. Back with me now is Brian Stelter, Jeffrey Tubin, and Dr. Judy Ho. Brian, you know, we struggle with this after almost every big tragedy, and uh, until we don't struggle with it anymore. We just saw the anniversary of JFK's death. We show the video of him being assassinated. We show Lee Harvey Os Oswald as well. Where, does, where do we draw the line here? When do we decide that it's okay to start playing tapes and showing video? Well, unfortunately, some of those videos, and then the JFK assassination is a, unfortunately a wonderful example of this, is that it becomes like wallpaper. I think we saw this after 9-11 as well. Some of the scenes of the towers falling became replayed so often they were like wallpaper and they actually may desensitize people over time. That is, is not uh, uh, the intent and I think that's not a good thing. But I do err on the side of wanting to show people more rather than less with warning labels, with uh, viewer discretion advisories. I err on the side of wanting to show people more rather than less to let them see unfortunately the horrors that are uh, out there in the world sometimes. Yeah, and I'm not sure if you heard Tom Miles, whose son was killed in Columbine, and I said, what's your advice for these families for the anniversary? And they said, turn off uh, the television, don't mm -hmm. watch the news. And that applies to all of us if, so, if we're uncomfortable with the television. So content. how do we cover the anniversary then, Brian? Well, I, I think CNN and others are making the right decision to not be in Newtown that day. After all, to stand there on, on a soccer field is really just using Newtown as a backdrop. New, the, the anniversary can be covered more effectively outside Newtown that day. Uh, but the anniversary should be covered. People should be reminded of what happened last year. But uh, as you pointed out, viewers and certainly uh, Newtown community members can and maybe should in that case turn off the TV for a day. That's not the worst thing in the world. And Judy, what about this when showing the images and you hearing things? Does this inspire copycats? Absolutely. We definitely have evidence of that when we look at past traumatic events. And so sometimes when we have these anniversaries, when they're meant to honor the victims, people actually use that as an opportunity to terrorize further and to use copycat types of methods. So that's one thing what? I'm worried about when we think about anniversaries. Wait, wait a second. I don't ahead, think Jeff. that's true. I I'm not aware of those sorts of copycats. I don't see someone else shooting up schools. Well, I mean, you know, look, the news media has a lot to defend itself about and we are far from perfect but the idea that we are somehow inspiring copycats I think is just factually wrong and and also just not uh, it, it just it's just not true but you heard Adam Lanza's family what? and his friend saying that he was obsessed with Columbine and I'm sure mm -hmm. he probably heard a lot about Columbine Jeffrey from the news media uh, of course he, he you know right. he, he was insane he was insane. Right. So what are, are we supposed to? Insane that's there. right. There are people who are insane. So we're supposed right. to pitch our news to to the insane viewer. We're supposed to cover no, the news. Absolutely Jeffrey, not. I've got a, I've got just a short amount of time here left. So then, what do we do? Where do we draw the line? Because you know there are people who are wanting the pictures now from Newtown to be released uh, in hopes that that maybe that they would help with gun legislation. Well. I, I certainly don't think that you know gruesome pictures of of children who've been shot uh, should be disclosed. I mean, there, there's no there's no reason for that. And, and I think ultimately this has to be left up to journalists. Uh, you know, the alternative is leaving it up to the government. Yeah. And yeah. and I just don't think that's um, that's an acceptable resolution. Jeffrey, Brian, Dr. Judy, thank you very much. I appreciate all of you tonight. I'm Don Lemon. This is the 11th hour. The Sandy Hook 911 tapes are out nearly a year later. They're uh, chilling and they make us remember a day that we wish had never happened, but it did. And is that all the more reason to hear them? With me tonight, the host of Reliable Sources, Brian Stelter, CNN senior legal analyst Jeffrey Tubin, and psychologist Judy Ho. Jeffrey, I'm going to start with you. You know, it did happen. Is that all the more reason to hear them? Well, certainly it's the reason why the judge was correct to release them. I think that's a very important initial point that you know, under Connecticut law, 911 tapes become, become public and these 911 tapes should be treated like, like every other. Also, this was a major event in American history, the biggest mass murder since 9-11. And it had big implications politically, socially, around the country. So you know, the idea that the public should have access to information about it is a good one. I think the question of whether we should broadcast it and whether we should use it on the air is a closer one. But I do think the judge was certainly right to put the information out where it belongs and let people decide, um, let journalists and other people decide whether they want to listen. So you think they should have been released, right? 
Uh, yes. Oh, okay. certainly they should have been released to the public. You know, how and wh whether we should have used it here on CNN, that's a harder question, I think. So, uh, Brian, what's your take on this? I mean, even if it needed to be released legally, do you think that it's newsworthy and that the, the news media should broadcast them? Well, the, the debate that Jeffrey's describing is the debate that's happened in every newsroom across the country today, including here at CNN. How much of these tapes are news, you know, how much of it is really newsworthy and how much of it is just dredging up the past? I do believe the tapes were very newsworthy. Now, I have to admit, I didn't want to listen to them. Uh, I waited many hours today because I didn't want to hear it. And hearing it on your show just now reminded me that what's so painful about these tapes is that it was too late. By the time these phone calls were coming in, it was too late. And I'm reminded by that when I hear the audio. I think that's one of the reasons why it's newsworthy, yeah. because it is a potent reminder that it was too late. Brian, if you were in charge, would you have released them? I think they absolutely should have been released. Journalists like me and you, we almost always err on the side of transparency. I mean, as Put a journalist, would you have played the them on the air? Played them on the air. You know, I actually think that the decision that CNN and uh, and the CBS made and Fox News made today was the right decision. Play yeah. excerpts, but not play the whole thing. Listen, if yeah. you want to find the audio where you hear the gunshots, it's on the internet. Yeah. Millions of people have heard it today. Uh, NBC and, and ABC decided not to broadcast any of the audio, but I think these other networks were right to air some of the excerpts because of the news, the newsworthy nature of it all. And I want to ask Jeffrey Tubin, Jeffrey, if you were in charge, would you have released them? You mean use them on CNN or release them to the public? Played them on CNN, yes. You know, I, I think I've sort of changed my mind over the course of the day. During the, when I first listened to them, I listened to them on the web, um, and you know, I listened to all of them, and I thought, you know, it didn't really add anything. I, I, I probably would have said, no, don't broadcast them. But, you know, when I heard Deb Farrick's story, when she edited them down and put them in context, I did think they were newsworthy. I thought, you know, the, the, the cool competence of the 9-11 operators, the, the very impressive performance of the custodian, um, the, the courage of the woman who was shot in the foot as she was on the air, uh, as she was on the phone, you know, I, I did think that was newsworthy, and, and, and I think CNN handled it the right way. It might be a reminder, by the way, that this is the value of old-fashioned reporting. It right. doesn't hurt to take a few hours, listen to the tapes, and put it in context. Yeah, and uh, Judy, listen, Doctor, and we're going to get you in, in this segment and a little bit later on as well, so don't think she, you're just sitting there doing in, uh, <laughs> nothing. But I want to I talk about, interestingly enough, the families are divided. Uh, on this and whether or not the tape should be released. I'm going to put up a full screen now uh, to one of the comments, and this is from the Connecticut Post, that the principal, Don uh, Hotsprung, made from, from the shooting. She said, I'd rather have more information about what happened that day. She said, the more information I have, the easier it is to wrap my brain around it. And then um, the, on the other side, Dean Pinto, whose six-year-old son, Jack, died in the shooting, he argued strongly against the release. And here's what he says. He says, while our freedom of information laws may have been adequate, in a world where only the mainstream media disseminated information, that is simply no longer the case. He wrote uh, to the task force on the victim privacy, he said, today anyone with a computer can have a broader audience than your local newspaper and decency and discretion seem to be unrecognizable concepts. What do you make of that? Do you think that they should have been released? Well, Don, I understand the legal issues here and why they should have been released from that aspect but no i don't think that they should be released because of the way that media is today just like that last gentleman's comment about it there are computers everywhere even if you have parental control kids can get past that and listen to these tapes themselves i think you presented two very different perspectives of how people do heal and what kind of information they need to take care of the problem but even indirect exposure when something doesn't happen to you can cause symptoms of trauma can cause post-traumatic stress disorder there was a study that was done last year about 911 dispatchers and how they have an elevated rate of post-traumatic stress disorder just from listening to the sounds of distress and imagining what the scene might be like and feeling helpless about it because really they're in these important roles but they actually don't have an active role of stopping it you know they're, they're in charge of dispatching people but they themselves can't do anything about it and that's how I feel about the general public they're going to listen to these tapes and feel that helpless feeling that they can't do anything to stop this trauma and then they might replay it over and over again in their minds and that's the start of post-traumatic stress disorder all right i'm going to ask all of you to stand by because of disagreement over releasing these tapes nothing new remember the challenger explosion the planes on 911 hitting the world trade center or the video of people jumping who decides what we can see and when
I'm Don Lemon. This is the 11th hour, and we're talking about those chilling Sandy Hook 911 tapes, and we're debating whether you should be able to listen to them. Back with me now is Brian Stelter, Jeffrey Tubin, and Dr. Judy Ho. Brian, you know, we struggle with this after almost every big tragedy, and uh, until we don't struggle with it anymore. We just saw the anniversary of JFK's death. We show the video of him being assassinated. We show Lee Harvey Os Oswald as well. Where, does, where do we draw the line here? When do we decide that it's okay to start playing tapes and showing video? Well, unfortunately, some of those videos, and then the JFK assassination is a, unfortunately a wonderful example of this, is that it becomes like wallpaper. I think we saw this after 9-11 as well. Some of the scenes of the towers falling became replayed so often they were like wallpaper and they actually may desensitize people over time. That is, is not uh, uh, the intent and I think that's not a good thing. But I do err on the side of wanting to show people more rather than less with warning labels, with uh, viewer discretion advisories. I err on the side of wanting to show people more rather than less to let them see unfortunately the horrors that are uh, out there in the world sometimes. Yeah, and I'm not sure if you heard Tom Miles, whose son was killed in Columbine, and I said, what's your advice for these families for the anniversary? And they said, turn off uh, the television, don't mm -hmm. watch the news. And that applies to all of us if, so, if we're uncomfortable with the television. So the how do we cover the anniversary then, Brian? Well, I, I think CNN and others are making the right decision to not be in Newtown that day. After all, to stand there on, on a soccer field is really just using Newtown as a backdrop. New, the, the anniversary can be covered more effectively outside Newtown that day. Uh, but the anniversary should be covered. People should be reminded of what happened last year. But uh, as you pointed out, viewers and certainly uh, Newtown community members can and maybe should in that case turn off the TV for a day. That's not the worst thing in the world. And Judy, what about this when showing the images and you hearing things? Does this inspire copycats? Absolutely. We definitely have evidence of that when we look at past traumatic events. And so sometimes when we have these anniversaries, when they're meant to honor the victims, people actually use that as an opportunity to terrorize further and to use copycat types of methods. So that's one thing what? I'm worried about when we think about anniversaries. Wait, wait a second. I don't ahead, think Jeffrey. that's true. I I'm not aware of those sorts of copycats. I don't see someone else shooting up schools. Well, I mean, you know, look, the news media has a lot to defend itself about and we are far from perfect but the idea that we are somehow inspiring copycats I think is just factually wrong and and also just not uh, it, it just it's just not true but you heard Adam Lanza's family well, and his friends saying that he was obsessed with Columbine and I'm sure mm -hmm. he probably heard a lot about Columbine Jeffrey from the news media uh, of course he, he you know right. he, he was insane he was insane. Right, and so there what are, are we people supposed who are to, insane That's out there. right, there are people who are insane. So we're supposed right. to pitch our news to, to the insane viewer? We're supposed to cover no, the news. Absolutely Jeffrey, not. I've, got a, I've got just a short amount of time here left. So then what do we do? Where do we draw the line? Because you know there are people who are wanting the pictures now from Newtown to be released uh, in hopes that, that maybe that they would help with gun legislation. Well, I, I certainly don't think that, you know, gruesome pictures of, of children who've been shot uh, should be disclosed. I mean, there, there's, no, there's no reason for that. And, and I think ultimately this has to be left up to journalists. Uh, you know, the alternative is leaving it up to the government. Yeah. And, yeah. and I just don't think that's, um, that's an acceptable resolution. Jeffrey, Brian, Dr. Judy, thank you very much. I appreciate all of you tonight.